Good morning from the Iowa State Capitol. This is your first Under the Golden Dome day as the legislature convened on Monday of this week. Um, before I get into the three things you need to know, I want to just give you a flavor of what it's like up here. Um, you know, the, the, the rotunda in the lobby is very, very empty as compared with a normal session year. Um, I am pleased that about 99% of the people that I've encountered are wearing masks and everybody's doing their best to try to social distance. Committees and subcommittees are uh, vastly different than what we have had in prior years. Um, the Senate is doing all of their committees from the chamber um, and all of their subcommittees are going to be done virtually, at least for now. On the House side, um, they are actually having physical committee meetings, but they are in larger rooms so that they can socially distance. They will do um, in-person subcommittees, if, um, but they are providing an option for people to view the subcommittees as well as to submit uh, public comments online. Um, and so it, it kind of changes how we're lobbying. Um, at this point, you know, we don't see a lot of later rolling around the rotunda. Um, it's a little more difficult and challenging to connect with people. And so it's really forcing us to revisit how we influence that process. Um, I think that it might get easier as we go on, but I will say this first week has been a bit of a struggle. Um, so the three things that you need to know about this week, um, it's a challenging year, both from the standpoint of education issues and and how we're going to be able to influence that process. Governor Reynolds outlined her um, priorities, and I will tell you that there are a lot of legislators that share those priorities, including return to a um, option for 100% in-person instruction, which I expect is going to move very, very quickly. Um, number two, we're going to have a lot of attention focused on educational savings accounts or vouchers. Um, the, the, the proposal that the governor put forth limits that only to kindergarten students or incoming kindergarten students who are in a school that's been identified um, as a failing school or a school in need of improvement under um, the federal Every Student Succeeds Act. And, and while on the surface that may be, okay, that's a really narrow view. What we've seen across the country is every single state that has moved toward full-blown vouchers started this way. This is a critical fight for us this year is to make sure that we do not allow this to happen because the next step is to expand that and pretty soon we'll look like Arizona and Ohio and all of the other states that have a voucher system. Number three, supplemental state aid. Uh, the governor's recommendation, frankly, was quite disappointing. Um, the 2.5% only generates $20 million in new money for schools. Um, we think we can do better and we are working very hard um, to push both the House and the Senate to um, provide $90 million, which is basically consistent with the last couple of years in new money, and to use current year's enrollment. Um, the budget guarantee is in place. It is something that has always been in place. It's always been activated. Um, we don't see that long-term the right solution is to allow a district to pick the higher of the two because it's not raising the base. Our goal is to get as high a percentage as possible so that we're raising the base and we provide more long-term stability for our school districts. So as you um, go through your, your daily life, I really encourage you on um, vouchers conversation, um, particularly with Republicans, and particularly if you have newly elected representatives. Vote counting is going to be really challenging. Um, we're not able to pull legislators out. We're going to have to reach them through other means, and you, you as board members and administrators are going to be a critical part of that process. So thank you. Have a great week, and we'll uh, catch up next week.